Welcome to the Leading Owls podcast, brought to you by Rice University's Door Institute for New Leaders. Each week, we bring you inspiring stories and practical tips from successful student leaders, faculty, and staff, along with leadership experts and coaches. In this episode, we are sitting down with Jonah Wagner, newly minted Rice alumnus and outgoing Baker College president. In May, Jonah earned a dual degree in mechanical engineering and physics. During his time at Baker, he revitalized the housing process, participated in a constitutional rewrite, and expanded student leadership opportunities within Baker with a special emphasis on early student involvement. In his free time at Rice, he participated on an engineering team that designed an autonomous net zero energy cargo sailboat. Please welcome Jonah. Hey, Jonah, thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about the leadership roles you are in right now on campus. Right now, I serve as the president of Baker College. It's one of the residential colleges of Rice University. The position has kind of become my life since I took over and had to drop everything else in order to make up the time in order to do this position. What was the very first leadership role that you remember taking on in your life from your childhood or in high school? I was in the music program back in high school. My first leadership position, I was the captain of our brass ensemble. It was a really great experience. I sort of led a team of lieutenants to run through rehearsals and everyone was in high school. We had nothing else to do with our lives at the time. And so everyone was fully committed. I kind of see it as leadership on easy mode because everyone was fully motivated towards the goal that we had. But it was my first exposure to it. And it really showed me what was possible, I think, through leadership. That's really amazing. As a young person, did you feel called to leadership? Did you feel like you were already a leader or did you just feel like you had potential? It was just something you wanted to try? Yeah, no, I, I don't think I chose leadership for leadership. I think I just wanted to be in those positions because I enjoyed what I did and I wanted to get more involved into it. I think it was more for the community first, but especially recently, I found that it's more the benefits of leadership and the personal outcomes that I find for myself that have become more valuable, especially as things became more challenging and it became harder to justify doing it just because it was fun. Because as you sort of climb the leadership ladder, there's a lot of times you encounter situations that are not fun. And you might ask yourself, why am I doing this? But I find that there's still a lot of great outcomes that can come from it. That's very true. What was your first leadership role at Rice? The room assignment chair. I think that was my first real leadership role at Rice. The room assignment chairs are just in charge of the housing process for our college. And Baker's the oldest college. We have four different buildings students can live in. And so housing is really competitive and you need to be really organized to get everything going smoothly. And I was motivated to do it because I, I really didn't feel like the process was running that smoothly the year before. And so I decided to give it a shot myself. It was actually very funny because I sort of changed everything when it came to housing. But the only thing I really did different was I just followed the rules that were set out to a T. I kind of just read through the governing documents, found a lot of organization and structure there and executed it as perfectly as I could. And it was a night and day difference. That was one of the first changes I made. And the first point I realized that student leadership is something I was interested in because I saw the, the change I was able to have. Well, that's really cool that you had a framework that you could go back to and base everything mm -hmm. on. You just had to stick to it. Yeah, no, absolutely. What skill do you think is most crucial in a good leader? Yeah, I'd probably say self-reflection has got to be the most important one to me. I think that there's a lot of skills that are very important, but at the end of the day, it's really being able to absorb the experiences of the people around you and use that to be critical of the way that you're approaching issues. I think it's really important to be able to acknowledge when you're wrong and be able to see other people's points as clearly as possible. That way you can make the best decision, especially since a lot of the issues we face as college presidents are incredibly multifaceted. It's really, really important to see everyone's point of view in order to come to a good decision. And if you don't have that self-reflective attitude and you just charge head on to into solving the problems, you'll oftentimes miss something that was right in front of you. That's really beautiful, actually. That's a great answer. <laughs> Thank you. What do you wish you had known as a freshman coming into Rice? Well, there's a lot of things I wish I would have known as a freshman. I changed my major a few times along the way. I had a rough start with a uh, matriculating in fall of 2020 during the pandemic, but maybe more in terms of leadership, I think. I wish I had known about the residential college system structure earlier on. I didn't really get involved until my sophomore year. Ironically, I didn't get involved because I didn't feel like I was able to represent my class adequately because I didn't feel connected to them. But in hindsight, that was probably the most shared experience of them all was not feeling connected to other people during the pandemic. That being said, the piece of advice I'd have for myself would just be to put myself out there more often and to go for the things that I'm interested in, even if I don't feel like I'm ready for it yet. I think that's kind of the point. 
That's great advice because I think with a lot of freshmen, they are nervous to put their toe in the water. They don't really know where to go or they think they're too young and they're a little bit nervous to try all the different things that are out there. But you're only here for four years. No, certainly. And you have to try everything. I try not to let anything hold me back from something that I'm genuinely interested in. You've done programs with the Door Institute. How have those programs helped you in your leadership roles on campus? I did activation twice. That's the one-on-one coaching. I did the first one my freshman fall, and that was a great experience. It it was really a nice one. The things that we tackled through that was finding creative ways to put myself more out there and socialize with students during the pandemic when it was really hard to make those connections. But it was really great. And the strategies that we talked about, they were very applicable even at this very small scale where it wasn't like I was holding a leadership role. It was just good for going through life. But then, of course, I got to do activation again this past fall. While I was in the position of president, the things we could talk about were (laughs) suddenly much more high level. It was a lot of fun. I found that coaching just in general, I didn't quite have the appreciation for it before this past fall than I do now. I really saw it as similar to mentorship, but it was really being able to dive into the coaching side of things where you're not necessarily being told what someone else thinks you should do. They're just really asking questions and guiding you to the answer that you maybe already have inside yourself, but you just haven't discovered it yet. Having those conversations is one of the best ways to talk about problems I've found because it really forces myself to dive into the problems that I'm facing. And I think the self-reflection that I mentioned before, that really comes out through the, the coaching side of things. That's awesome. Is there another fellow student leader at Rice that really inspires you? Yes and no. There's no, I think, one leader I look to whenever it comes to these things. But I will say that my cohort of presidents, the other 10 residential colleges and the student association combined with myself were a group of 12. And working with them this past year has been one of the highlights of my leadership career, just because each of them are so uniquely different. It's a special kind of person that usually wins a presidential election because you're elected by your peers. You've got such a unique experience. Everyone comes into these positions and they're all just such interesting characters characters. And I've absolutely loved observing all of us work together over the course of the year. And I really admire so many different things about the ways that they approach issues. I like to kind of pick amongst the things that I observe from all of them. I think that they've all played a really pivotal role in enhancing my leadership abilities because I try and mimic the qualities that I really admire about each of them. It's so nice that you have that group to lean on and to talk with because you guys are very unique in the problems that you're facing in that group. Yeah, it's a very important group to have because the role of college president is so unique and so stressful. So having those people that know what it's like, it would be very difficult to do this without them. Who is a leader who helped you get to where you are today or a mentor? There's so many throughout my life, both in high school and college as well. Most recently this year, I'd say some of the most influential mentors I've had are Kate Abad. She works in the dean's office. She's kind of there to support all of the presidents in their endeavors. And I've met with her many times and she's helped me through a lot of my hardships that I've faced as a president. And then also my mentor in the Center for Civic Leadership, Danica Brown. She is absolutely fantastic. I've met with her almost every week since I took over this job. She's been my person to rant to, to explain things to and to workshop things with. But there have also been countless others. I couldn't possibly name them all, both before Rice and at Rice. I really enjoy talking to people and talking through the challenges I'm facing because I need outside perspectives in order to feel like I've gotten the full picture of what I'm dealing with. Yeah, getting that outside perspective really, really helps and just letting you know that there's more going on outside of Baker. (laughs) No, absolutely. Absolutely. What cartoon character do you think is a good leader? <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought about this for a while. I'm not really a cartoon guy, so I didn't have much to go off of. But ultimately, what I decided on was the conductor from Polar Express, which seems like a, a weird answer at first. No, but, that's a great uh, answer. He's kind of in the background in a lot of the scenes and pulling a lot of the strings, whether you know it or not. But I really see it as a developmental leadership style. You almost don't even notice him unless he wants to be heard. But the whole time he's teaching this big group of kids a bunch of lessons about themselves that he knows about before they've even begun their journey. And they only discover at the very end as he's led them through this series of interesting experiences. I wasn't sure what I was going to get for that question. And uh, that's a great answer. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What do you love about leadership? 
I would say maybe in a high level, it's just the ability to influence change at a broader scale than you would be able to do by yourself. But maybe slightly more than that, I really like the personal and professional development that I've gained from my experiences. It's been a lot of fun. And that was what kickstarted leadership for me was just wanting to get involved in a community. Oftentimes that involves leadership, but As things got more challenging, just having a community wasn't enough to support me wanting to continue leadership because things got more challenging with time and the expectation became more and more demanding. Making a mistake sometimes means your community doesn't support you anymore. That's something you have to be able to accept. But at the end of the day, whenever I think about how I have changed as a person, my competencies just in life, I feel a lot more capable that feels very empowering. It's something that I can always fall back on. Whether or not my community is there for me, of course, Baker has largely always been there for me whenever I needed them. But there's certainly been those challenging moments. And the thing that I can always rely on is that I'm a better person for doing this. Whenever I have my moral framework to lean on and really just relying on the way I've approached all the issues that I've faced, it's something that I can be proud of. So I'd say my favorite thing about leadership is just the outcomes, (laughs) both personal, professional, everything. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jonah, and good luck with the rest of your year as president. We're really rooting for you, and it sounds like you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. And there's not that much time left. I only have 19 more days of the presidency. The time of Wow. The it's almost done. Well, enjoy those last 19 days. I'm sure you'll miss it once you're done. Oh, I certainly will. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us for the Leading Owls podcast. We will be back next week with more leadership journeys and tips to share. New episodes release each Wednesday. For more information on the Door Institute for New Leaders and our free leader development programs for Rice students, please visit door.rice.edu.